All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get into um, getting our basic canvas going. So if we test and see what we've got, this is what I call like a just the, the default setup. So I've just got my canvas, and it's got a black background, which is made by a color rec function, which we're going to use to draw our players. So very first thing is your first basic test, once you get that on, is say, could we test if we have a something that's going to be considered like our player. There you go, that's our, our player. Um, we'll make them green because they're good guys. And then we'll say, I don't know, make it 100 across. Um, and that will be our enemy. Um, save. There you go. So enemies down 100 by 100. Players there. Okay, great. Um, so obviously we can't get this to move if they're just type numbers. So we need them to be variables. So var player x pos equals um, zero. Okay, that'll be the y pos. Player const uh, player underscore size ten because it's size. It's both by both. Var player x speed. I don't know. Five sounds good to me. Y speed, okay. Um, play X pause. Play a Y pause. Play a size. Play a size. Right, so they're still in there. That's great. And so if I wanted to update this, just check that, um, you know, there's. 100, so it should just be moving across further. There we go. So, yep, that's all working. Um, then, basically, I might as well take all this and call it enemy uh, enemy x pause. Enemy size. Yeah. Oops. Um, enemy. Oh, enemy X speed and enemy Y speed. And then enemy Y. Enemy size, enemy size. Um, trouble is they're going to now overlap over the top. We see the enemy, why? Because this is drawn first, then that's drawn last, and so that one's on top. Um, so if we want to get, say, our enemy moving, so I'm just going to go function enemy move. Enemy x pos plus equals enemy x speed. Oh, <laughs> rookie mistake. Make sure you actually call the function in the main loop. Um, so this main loop is the thing that runs according to this 60 times per second. Um, What are you doing to me? Seriously. All right. Um, enemy move. All right. Let me run this. There you go. So the enemy's moving. Obviously, we can do this the same with enemy Y pause, enemy Y speed. Right. Um, I want mine. To kind of just rain down the screen and then keep going into a new place. So if um, 
Oops, sorry, I should be inside the bracket. Enemy y pos is greater than canvas dot height. Uh, then we're going to say enemy y pos equals zero because it's the top of the canvas. Um, but we also want to minus off the enemy size so it appears right out the top of the canvas because it draws from the top down. So when it re blips, it would blip inside. So if you watch now, this and we actually get to see it kind of fall in. Um, it'll be a little bit clearer if I up the enemy size. So you can see as it goes out and it comes in rather than it appearing in. Um, oh, maybe leave it a little bit bigger. Okay, so the other thing is I'd like it to appear anywhere across that top area. So if I say enemy x pos equals math dot floor then I need a parameter in there so I need to have something inside that uh, which is math dot random no parameter so you don't write inside there times by so math dot random generates a random number between one sorry zero and point nine so if I times it by ten that should be zero to nine um, but what I want to do is generate a number that's between um, canvas.width minus enemy size. Because what I don't want it doing is when we get to the canvas that it appears half in and half out. Um, so that will account for that. So it'll be a maximum of the canvas width minus that and a minimum of zero, which is still up against the edge anyway, so that's fine. So if I save that and then rerun this, we'll get that, and now it's appearing randomly across the screen, which is all good. Um, and our enemy is basically doing pretty much all of our behavior. Um, I am going to be a little bit short, um, yeah, a little bit short cutty. So play X pause. I'm going to put it in as two hundred. Play of Y highs, I'm going to put it in as um, just move the player size up and I will put it up in as I oh know what we do canvas.height because it doesn't work until we run a function. So 400 minus player size. So now it's appearing center ish. And basically, what I'm waiting for is this to touch now. So I'm going to say here, was we're going to, oh, am I going to bother with the collision? No. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, why not? If no, we won't, we won't, we won't. We're getting too technical. Okay, so now I've got my my enemy respawning, moving, getting basic uh, basic movement functioning, and getting it even to randomly change. I could, if this wasn't a constant, also get the size to change. I can actually. This is a good point. Enemy uh, y speed equals y re oops um y retype it but you can use this okay so i'm going to have the max here so i'll say a maximum speed of i don't know 12 and a minimum speed of four then we do as we plus the minimum back on so now we should get, yeah, you can see some of them are faster, some of them are slower. So you go. So that's that's working as well. Um, doing this, and this was just helps everything. Just it's all these little touches here with the random speeds and the random um, positions that make everything just seem that much better. So I'll I'll kind of pause that there, and we'll um, pick up with another video here where we're going to take this single enemy and make it into multiple enemies, but we're going to use basically the same logic here. I might do another video with collision first, actually. Um, and then we're going to use this um, same logic here afterwards to um, then make it so it's multiple enemies in logic. We're just kind of going to work over the top of it. Um, so, yeah, great.